Welcome hunters to an in-depth look at all the content from the new Monster Hunter World board game from SFG. In short, they basically took the boss mechanics from their Dark Souls board game, took out the dice mechanics, and put an emphasis on cards. I'm not going to go into detail on how to play the game, but I will give you a sense of how the game plays. There are seven boxes that comprise all the content from the Kickstarter. There are two core boxes in the form of the Ancient Forest and the Wild Spiral Waste, three Elder Dragons in the form of Teostra, Nergigante, and Kushaladora, one Hunter Supplement in the form of the Hunter's Arsenal, and the Kickstarter exclusive box that adds a monster and the Kickstarter bonuses in the form of the Kuliaku box. Essentially, you can pick up any of the two core boxes, either the Ancient Forest or the Wild Spire Waste, and that'll have everything you need with a variety of content. The game is meant to be played like a campaign. Each hunter will take this sheet of paper and be able to track all of the resources that they acquire and the things that they craft throughout the campaign. You have 25 days to hunt a four star monster. But the way that you accomplish this goal is by naturally hunting smaller monsters. So you'll hunt monsters until you can harvest enough of their resources to create better gear, which will let you challenge tougher monsters until you're finally able to take on and defeat a four star monster. So what do the other boxes offer you? Each box essentially adds more hunter content or more monster content. The two core boxes each come with four hunters and four monsters. The Elder Dragon boxes give you one new Elder Dragon. The Elder Dragons are a step above the strongest monster in your core box. And what I mean is, in the core box, your goal is to defeat a four-star monster. But if you add one of these Elder Dragons, your goal will then be to defeat the five-star monster that is the Elder Dragon. The Kuliaku box simply adds one smaller size monster that can be added into your pool of available monsters as well as the Kickstarter bonuses but those are all aesthetic in nature. They simply provide alternate sculpts to the hunters that you can find in the core boxes as well as Palico miniatures that can replace the tokens that you use in the game. The hunter's arsenal adds six unique hunters bringing the total of the two core boxes and the arsenal to 14 weapons which is exactly the same as what's available in the monster hunter world video game but how does all this content come together how does it really work well we look at what a monster entails they'll have three difficulties ranging from one to five if you're an elder dragon but these star difficulties are not equivocal for example the Great Jagras at one star is not the same as Nier Gigante at one star. This is simply the difficulty delineations between this monster. So the two star version of the Great Jagras is harder than the one star, three harder than the two. They don't transfer over from monster to monster. It's the internal difficulty. So with each difficulty, it'll change the stats, the resistances, and their special abilities but their behaviors which can be found in these behavior cards will remain roughly the same there are 13 cards per monster which means that there are 13 unique moves that they can do however when you're actually building the deck of their behavior you'll only use 11 cards not only that when you're playing the campaign version of monster hunter world you first need to find the monster and you do that by looking at their quest book if you get one of the expansion monsters it'll be in their specific booklet in this quest book you'll decide which monster you want to hunt and at which difficulty you must hunt a monster's one star difficulty before you can attempt either of the harder difficulties which means that let's say I defeat the one star great and then I can choose to attempt the two star or the three star they're both seen as investigation quests 
After deciding which monster I want to hunt, I'll go to the entry for that hunt. If I'm doing the assigned quest, I go to entry 1. If I'm doing the investigation quest, I do entry 2. If it's my second time doing an investigation quest, regardless of the difficulty, I go to entry 3, then entry 4, then entry 5. Meaning that you can only attempt to hunt a monster a total of 5 times. One assigned quest, and then four investigation quests of whatever difficulty mix you want. Turning to the entries in these books, you'll find that this is a choose your own adventure where you'll have some flavor text as to what's going on in your hunt and then green box options telling you what options you have, what reward you get for your choices and which entry to turn to next. So you'll go around making choices, trying to find your monster. And as you do this, you'll be drawing these tokens face down and perhaps even discarding tokens. The more tokens you have, the better. And by the time you find the monster, you flip them all over and add up your result. This will be your scout fly level. And depending on which monster difficulty you chose to hunt, your scout fly level will determine which of the three optional behavior cards get added into your monster's behavior deck. The last piece of content that a monster provides is the weapons and armors you can craft from hunting that monster. This kind of goes hand in hand with the hunter content. The way that this game delineates classes is by their weapon. You don't say that you want to be a warrior or a mage. You say that you want to be a sword and shield user. You want to be a great sword user, a long sword user a bow user, etc. And once you make your choice on which weapon you want to use, you are stuck in that choice. The cool thing is, picking a weapon kind of makes everything easier for you. After you pick a weapon, you'll find their reference card, which will show you which weapons that they can craft, and of course the armors that you can craft from your various monsters. But it's important to note that not every weapon archetype cares about all the monsters, not even the ones within their own box. For example, in the Ancient Force, you have the Sword and Shield weapon type. In the Ancient Force box, you'll find four monsters. The Great Jagras, Anjanath, Tobikadachi, and Rathalos, and technically Azure Rathalos. But the Sword and Shield user only really cares about Great Jagras and Rathalos. He doesn't care about to Tobikadachi or Anjanath. But if you're, say, playing with a bow user who cares about the other two monsters that you don't care about, you might find issue in which monster you two want to hunt together. But that's not to say that there's no point for these players to hunt the other player's monsters because materials can be exchanged between players. So all the earnings from the kill that you get, you can just pass on to your friend so that they can craft the weapon that they need or want faster. Alternatively, you can keep those resources to yourself and attempt to craft the armors for that monster. And depending on which weapon you end up crafting or using, it'll determine your deck of attack cards and it'll determine your deck of damage cards. This game doesn't use dice as its RNG manipulator, it uses cards. Upon selecting your weapon of choice, you'll gather that weapon's starting cards, and that'll be your initial attack deck. Then you'll also craft a damage deck of specific cards according to the weapon. For example here, a hunter's knife starts with 8 1 damage cards and 4 2 damage cards. And so that's what this deck is comprised of. And you'll also note that each weapon also may tell you how to manipulate your starting deck, telling you to remove specific cards or allowing you to remove which cards you want and adding new cards. This is an attack deck. You'll have your hand of cards drawn randomly from your deck and on your turn you decide which cards you want to play to attack the monster with. 
the symbol here in the middle shows that when this attack connects to your enemy, how many damage cards will you draw from your deck? So you'll shuffle this and draw, adding the numbers together to determine how much damage you do, comparing it to the monster and where you hit them and other factors like that. The game itself is pretty straightforward, as you'll spend most of your time simply doing the fight mechanic. The hunting of said monster and the deciding of what to do with its resources afterwards comprise the other two phases of the game, but naturally they're not as engaging as the actual fight mechanic itself. Which means that if you don't enjoy spending your hour or so simply just fighting the boss, you may not enjoy this game. But if you're okay with that idea, if you enjoy the mechanic, or if you enjoy how this emulates the video game, then this might be worth your time. And what's really cool about all this content is how it just adds in together. For example, let's say you start with the ancient forest. It gives you these four hunters and the four monsters associated. But you decide later that you want to get the other box set and see how that plays. If you want to do that, all you simply have to do is just agree to add it to your campaign. Technically, this box comes with more content than you're allowed to use in the box. What I mean by that is, uh, say we take our sword and shield user. The cards that are associated with this user are all their weapons cards and all their attack cards based on their weapons. But you'll find that there are more cards than what is shown on this reference card because it also gives you the cards necessary for the other box set in case you also want to add that into your pool. That way mixing content is very easy. You can take your sword and shield hunter and actually just use this character in the wild spiral waste and they'll have everything that they need. They even have another reference sheet here for that specifically where it shows you what monsters they enjoy hunting in the Wild Spiral Waste, and of course, the armors that they can get from the Wild Spiral Waste monsters. And you can simply add the monsters to just be available in your pool, and whether or not you actually decide to hunt them is up to you. You start with your initial four, and then decide, well, we want the other ones too. Well, then now they're just available for you. You don't have to do anything special, and you can do their one star quests and then continue to hunt them or stop. Adding the new hunters is much the same. Here we have six new weapon types that have relevant reference cards for being in the ancient forest or for being in the wild spar waste. So you have everything that you need to take these characters into either box. Adding these elder dragons is much the same. In a box, we'll find, of course, the model associated, their rule book, which will have a few reference pages of which hunters specifically like to hunt them for their weapon, and the generic armors that everyone can use. In here, you have your three difficulties, and of course, the quest tracking system associated with it. So if you look at the cards that come in here, you'll have the different weapons, which tells you which damages to bring, and it may even add some extra damage in case enough don't appear in the core box. And of course, the relevant attack cards. Some might also provide these time cards. I'll explain that real quick. Basically, the difficulty of the game is to hunt the monster within a time period as denoted by cards. You essentially have a deck of say 30, 40 plus cards, and every turn a hunter takes, they use up one time card. And the time mechanic begins as soon as you start to track the monster. If you take too long tracking the monster, you'll have less time to actually fight the monster. But also the choices that you make while tracking it could add more time to your time deck. But these time cards are not just cards that say time passes, they are cards that can make things easier or harder. It's essentially the things that happen on the battlefield as everyone is running around fighting the monster. You'll encounter things on the ground 
thematically, not in actuality. And they can do things like damage you, damage the monster, give you a refresh of cards, allow people to move around differently, so on and so forth. That's what the time cards are. So adding these monsters simply give you more options as a player. And so I really enjoy that part of how this all comes together because in other games, adding expansions means that you are excluding other expansions. You know, in Dark Souls, if you want to use the Dark Root Basin encounters, you're not using the Core encounters or you're not using the Old Iron Keep encounters. If you pick a Mega Boss, it means that you're not fighting the other ones. And while I say this is a campaign based system, the campaign itself is pretty freeform. You know, there is this day mechanic, but you really don't need to follow it. And they say that if you don't want to use it, you're free to not. And if you want to just hunt monsters over and over freely, you're welcome to do so. They really give you a lot of power in terms of how you want to play the game. And I really enjoy that. So let's get to the nitty gritty and talk about the boxes, what they offer, and whether or not it's worth it for you to get them. Because obviously these hobbies are expensive and you want to know you're getting your money's worth. If you think that you would enjoy this gameplay, you can pick up any of the core sets, the Ancient Forest or the Wild Spire Waste. The Ancient Forest comes with four monsters in the form of the Great Jagras, Anjanath, Tobikodachi, and Rathalos. The Wild Spire Waste comes with Baroth, Puke Puke, Giratodos, and Diablos. The Ancient Forest has the Great Sword, the Sword and Shield, the Bow, and the Dual Swords weapons. The Wild Spire Waste comes with the Charge Blade, the Heavy Bow Gun, the Insect Glaive, and the Switch Axe. Both the rule books are exactly the same, except the Wild Spire Waste has an extra page clarifying some weapon rules for the weapons in that box because they are more complicated than the ones here in the Ancient Forest. Whichever box set you pick as your starting point is completely up to you, depending on which monsters you find more interesting or which weapons you think are more fun or that speak to you. And from there, if you want to expand into the other core box, then you've just doubled your content. You have four more weapons to pick from, four more monsters to pick from, technically five, because there are alternate color versions of Rathalos. There's Rathalos and uh, Azure Rathalos, and then Diablos and Black Diablos. So technically different, technically the same, doesn't matter. There's five monsters in each box. So you just double your content in buying the second core set. If you enjoy the game that much and you just want more, go for it. Then we have the Hunter's Arsenal, which comes with six more weapons in the form of the longsword, the hammer, the gun lance, the light bow gun, the lance, and the hunting horn. And of course you can take either of these and just add them to your ancient forest or add them to your watch by waste. You have all the cards you'll need for that. This is a cool expansion, definitely a recommend if you care about the weapons that are in here. If you're completely happy with the weapons that you get in your core box, and want to fully explore all the classes before really looking at getting more just weapons, by all means, that's totally up to you. Even just having two core boxes with eight weapons, that's a lot of content. Because you'll be one of those weapons for the entirety of a campaign, it means that you have to get very familiar with them. The Kuliaku expansion brings in Kuliaku as a monster. He's not as difficult as the Elder Dragons, but as a monster, then gives you new weapons and new armors that you can craft. But again, not every monster can give you a weapon for every class. But more monsters is more monsters, that's more content. And this is a Kickstarter exclusive box so it might be harder to find once this hits retail. The Elder Dragons extend your campaign. They give you a new ceiling to try and reach for. And of course, new weapons and gear to craft. I would recommend getting one of them. It's not necessary to get all three, but you can use all three. 
but I should also mention one last important detail before I leave you here. I mentioned that this game is meant to be played like a campaign, where you spend your 25 days or so hunting monsters until you can beat your final monster. But if you don't have the time for that, or if you just want to experience one of these monsters without having to grind up to become strong enough to fight one of these monsters, in the quest book, there are arena quests. These are one-off scenarios where you just say, I just want to fight Black Diablos. How do I do that? And you say, okay. You look at this chart and you find which weapon you want to use. Then it'll tell you which weapons and armor to specifically grab. And depending on the weapon that you get will determine your attack deck and will also determine your damage deck. So your character is then assembled. Then all you have to do is set up the map and just play the game. This way you don't have to do the tracking. This way you don't have to do the resource management. If you just want to play the game, you can do that. So if you're having a one-off night with your friends, you can fight any monster without having to have them sit down and commit to 25 in-game days of hunting monsters over and over and over and over again. But as anyone who plays Monster Hunter the video game will tell you, yeah, that's what you do. That's Monster Hunter. You pick a monster, kill him, farm him until you get everything you need out of him, and then fight the next over and over and over and over. And that's fun. And this game is also fun in that regard. I'll need to play it more to really have a final verdict, but I enjoy what I see here and I'm excited to paint and play with it. So keep your eyes posted to this channel for when that happens. And that's all I have for now. Do all the YouTube things. Thanks so much for your guys' support and keep those comments coming because I still reply to them even if I can't put out new videos all the time. So that's all for now. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for the tutorial and future gameplay of Monster Hunter World on this channel.